What's going on guys? I'm Dr. James Cellini. I'm a veterinary neurologist. Probably already guessed I am at my brother Dr. Cellini's house and I decided I would use his equipment to make a video because well it's a lot nicer than putting an iPhone on a tripod. So in this video what I want to do is basically answer a question that I got from one of the admins in a very popular Facebook group that is all things French Bulldog and disc herniations. It has over 18,000 members and there's multiple daily posts um, about all things related to disc herniations. This Facebook group is obviously very popular and one of the admins messaged me to try to clarify some points of confusion that most uh, dog owners have in regards to genetic testing for disc disease. Yes, there is a genetic test out there that allows testing for um, kind of risk for disc disease. There is a lot of kind of misinformation and kind of almost like a misunderstanding that a lot of people have about the limitations of the genetic test and what it does and what it doesn't do. So I thought I would take this opportunity to address some of those questions, kind of clarify some key points about disc disease and dogs in general, especially French Bulldogs. And what better place to do it than at Dr. Cellini's office where I can use all of his equipment. All right, so let's get started. All right, so before I get into talking about the genetic testing of disc disease in dogs, let's talk a little bit about what disc disease even is and what it means. Okay, so the first thing I wanna get into is what is disc disease and what is a disc herniation and how they differ. So to start with, intervertebral disc disease simply refers to a genetically prone or propensity for a dog's discs in their back and their neck and their whole spine to degenerate at a much more rapid and earlier time in their life compared to a dog who does not have disc disease, okay? So if you wanna think of a disc in its normal state being like a jelly donut, where it's very, uh, a jelly donut that's very uh, fresh, friable, there's a, a nucleus, that's the jelly, and then there's what's called the annulus, which is the dough, um, that should maintain its kind of normal fresh state for at least a few years when it, after a dog is born. But if a dog has certain genetics, such as a chondrodystrophy mutation, which I will touch on in a second, when they are born, starting at about 10 weeks of age, their disc will not be able to maintain their normal healthy state and they dry out, they do what's called desiccate, and they get very friable. So think of that jelly donut as basically sitting out on the counter all day and becoming really stale and brittle by the end of the day. So dogs get intervertebral disc disease for a number of reasons. Uh, most are genetic, but one of the major recently discovered uh, mutations in dogs is what's called chondrodystrophy. Intervertebral disc herniation is the actual problem that we're worried about here. This is the problem that French Bulldogs, Dachshunds, Basset Hounds, Beagles, all sorts of other breeds encounter all the time. As a neurologist, I see this issue at least once a week, and, and we're talking like doing surgery for this problem at least once a week. Um, but the disc, when it herniates, that is where all the problems come from. When a disc is simply degenerative, but it is not herniating, there's really no issue. There's no necessary symptom or problem that we frequently encounter when dogs have a, disc, a disease disc, IBDD, but we see problems when they herniate their disc. And when a disc herniates, unfortunately, it tends to go straight up right where there's a very important structure that is called the spinal cord. And as it turns out, the spinal cord does not like having things run into it very suddenly and squeeze and push on it. When that happens, the spinal cord gets injured, compressed, and that's when dogs develop back pain, paralysis, or sometimes dogs can even die from a disc herniation, believe it or not. There is a subset of dogs that will develop a fatal progressive spinal cord injury called myelomalacia after a disc herniation. And getting back to the French Bulldog theme of this video, French Bulldogs seem to be the dog breed that is most susceptible to this. And we see this, unfortunately, if you're a busy neurologist, you're seeing this multiple times a year in French Bulldogs. And it's really sad to see. So getting back to the genetic test a little bit, how does the genetic test help with detecting if a disc herniates or if a dog has IBDD or if a dog is going to herniate a disc? Well, all it really tells you is one of two things. One, if your dog has a normal genetic test, meaning it has a uh, homozygous normal, uh, that means they do not have chondrodystrophy and they are not at an increased risk for this specific mutation causing them to have a disc herniation. However, if your dog is either heterozygous or homozygous 
for this chondrodystrophy mutation, then they are at a hugely increased risk for having a disc herniation in their life, somewhere on the order of about a 12 times risk. Um, and what we see is when we look at dog breeds such as French Bulldogs, and we actually take a cohort of French Bulldogs like UC Davis did, and they go through and they say, okay, how many of these dogs have this chondrodystrophy mutation? What they find is that the alleles for chondrodystrophy are present in a greater than 90% frequency, meaning these genes are all over the place in French Bulldogs. So the genetic test itself, if you get a positive result that says my dog has chondrodystrophy, that still doesn't mean anything other than risk, okay? Doesn't mean they're going to herniate a disc herniation, uh, but it just tells you that they are a dog breed that's at risk for this. It just so happens my own dog happens to have this. My dog is not a French Bulldog. He was literally found in a gutter in New Mexico back in 2012 when I was working as an ER doctor. I genetic tested him with the Embark panel just to see kind of what his genes look like. And the only thing that came back as abnormal was chondrodystrophy. Go figure, right? So um, what that tells me with my dog Bernie is that he is at a risk for having a disc herniation. But he's never had a problem and he's 12 years old now. And I don't know if he's going to have a problem, frankly, going forward, you know, knock on wood. Um, but thus far, the genetic test has only told me his genotype, but he hasn't really produced a problem from that genotype. So getting back to how does the genetic test help you and what does it mean? Well, I would think of it this way. If my dog tested positive for this mutation, this chondrodystrophy mutation, I would probably work to modify their lifestyle a little bit. I would do things like, you know, restrict running. I would restrict the really high impact stuff like stairs and like sprinting and you know jumping and things like that. But having said that, there is also no evidence really that a lack of activity or a lack of doing these things decreases the risk of a disc herniation. This is all more or less a common sense sort of a recommendation on veterinarians parts to try to say, okay, we're trying to mimic bed rest as best we can, uh, like a person would get if they herniated a disc for some period of time. But certainly we see dogs all the time who herniate discs. I, we see this scenario play out constantly where dogs are resting in a crate overnight, they go in fine and they come out in the morning paralyzed because their disc is herniated. Um, so this is obviously something that just restricting activity does not necessarily you know, eliminate. And to further complicate matters, if your dog is normal for this chondrodystrophy uh, genetic test um, and they don't seem affected by that, that's great, but that doesn't mean that the risk of herniating a disc is necessarily zero. There's other genes um, and other reasons why a dog can herniate a disc that we don't completely understand or know. And certainly not every dog that has ever herniated a disc is positive for this mutation. So it's important to understand the limitations there. So why would you do it? Well. If you're a breeder and you're breeding French Bulldogs, you should probably breed French Bulldogs that are homozygous normal for this genetic test, meaning they have no chance of transmitting or passing down this chondrodystrophy mutation to their offspring. The problem is, as we alluded to earlier, if this allele is present in a greater than 90% frequency of all French Bulldogs, like we think it might be, where are you going to find these 10% of bulldog or French Bulldogs who don't have this mutation. It's going to be very difficult. And to further complicate that is just the issue with inbreeding in general with purebred dogs. French Bulldogs have an inbreeding coefficient that is pretty much similar to like an average sibling-sibling cross. So when you've got a population of dogs, and it's not just French Bulldogs, it's, it's many, many, many uh, purebred dogs are, have suffer from this problem too. But when you've got a population of dogs that is so inbred and the gene is so prevalent across them as an entire dog population, I just don't know how you're going to breed out this problem unless you commit to just changing the shape of the breed in general, which is what I totally advocate for. These dogs need to start changing their shape and we need to define a French Bulldog as more of what it used to be, say, 100 years ago compared to what it is now, which has frankly been way, way, way too tinkered with. And this is the reason why a French Bulldog develops, I would argue, more problems than any other breed and suffers from more health issues than any other breed, save for like English Bulldogs and Pugs maybe. That's, that's about it. So again, to summarize, the genetic test for chondrodystrophy I think is pretty useful and I think we should start keeping track of all of the French Bulldogs out there with this mutation. But I think it's important to understand that 
if you have a dog that tests positive for this chondrodystrophy mutation, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have a disc herniation, just that they're at risk for it. And it certainly can't predict how severe that disc herniation is going to be. There's no way to test for something like that. Conversely, if your dog is normal for this phenotype, then I would say there's at least not that risk for a disc herniation, but there's certainly other factors that we don't know. And if your dog is of a certain breed that we know to be at risk for a disc herniation, like dachshunds, beagles, French bulldogs, basset hounds, many others, um, I would still exercise some precautions like I mentioned earlier. And a lot of people ask me at work all the time, is there some sort of supplement I can give my dog? Is there something that I can kind of give them to help their discs be healthier? And unfortunately, there's really not. There's really nothing that you can do to give them, whether it be a supplement or otherwise, any sort of treatment, that's going to change the chemistry of their disc because that is just simply abnormal based on their genetics in these cases. And it's really sad that we can't fix this problem. And the only thing that we can really do is to kind of reactively treat it. The goal would be to try to prevent it from happening, but it's just not something that we can realistically do. So I hope that helps clear up some of the confusion surrounding the genetic test. I'm happy to entertain any questions or comments uh, down below. If you have anything uh, that you want to reach out and ask me, feel free. Uh, thank you for watching this and hope you enjoyed the video in Dr. Cellini's studio. I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.